get this party started. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh my god, it's a Hydra! Welcome once again to 40k Amateur Hour, where the where the points are made up and the nothing's real. So today, as you can tell, <laughs> flyers. We're talking the new Death from the Sky supplement. And already, Rico, who's out of frame, hates it. Hi. <laughs> I don't hate it. You just ate all of your models with an Aegis Sigmar one. <laughs> Let's talk about 40k. For for a long time, we haven't done anything about 40k. You keep saying a long time. It hasn't. Long time. You know, I, I do all the editing and I know when the, the last galaxy time. Far, far, far away. I okay. know the last time we put up a video of 40K. Long. It was like last week. But anyway. That's, yeah, last week. Planes. Before that. Planes! The planes! The planes! The so, so it's been out for a while. We kind of, I, I went and bought it. And I gotta be honest, we, we just got done talking about it. Can we start with the cover art? If you want to. It's, it's a fine book. We're going to have to probably get it closer to the camera. It's, You've been doing this for like a year now. You don't know how this works? It's visually appealing. No more we are amateurs as an excuse. No. I would say we're semi-amateur now. Quasi-professional. Semi-pro. Ooh. I like it. I saw our paycheck and it's... Anyway. Yeah. We got paid? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Oh, let's just, no. let's just say it. It's not the greatest supplement in the world. At least in our opinion. Rico absolutely hates it. I did not say I absolutely hate it. I believe the word you used was loathe beyond the depths of hell. No, I don't think that you said either one of those words. That's not true, but it sounds fun. <laughs> no, I said, and we'll talk about it. I said by itself it wouldn't be a bad game. Renegade for airplanes. Renegade, Renegade for, for airplanes. airplanes. Yeah. Which, watch our uh, Renegade review. Somewhere down here, probably. I'll link it. So, really quickly, and we're not going to spend... Uh, what are you doing? We're looking for it down here. Or up in the air. Oh, oh we're flying. Yes, yeah, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because, oh my gosh, we could we could be here all day talking about what's good and what's bad. Put the Aegis Sigmar Dragon down. Can I say the paint schemes, the pictures of the paint schemes in there are actually kind of cool? There's some neat... Well, it's your typical... I know, but it's visually shot. appealing, looking at all the different... I like yeah, that. so you can paint your different colors. All right, so here we go. There's a couple things you have to do. One... This book replaces all of your rules in the game, we're not talking about the dogfight phase yet, in the game for your flyers. That is mandatory. It says so in the book. You have to use the stats. The stats. Stats. And formation. it's added to abilities or statistics or thing majiggers to each airplane. Airplane. Agility. Agility. And pursuit. Pursuit, pursuit of happiness. Not of doom? I thought it was Are you feeling okay? And it gives you some formations that you can use. Other than that, and, and he's okay with that, right? You're okay with right. the new stats. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Stats are stats. Debbie Downer. Nah, I kind of usually I'm, I, I disagree with him with 40k. I'm with him on this one. We're on this side. What side am I on? Whatever I side you want. Whatever <laughs> side you want to be on. I'm on the left. On the left. Where'd it go? Where'd I don't it go? Know. There it is. All right. Pursuit and agility. So all flyers. Are we just gonna get right into it. Sure. So here's the new. Here. Oh, let's back up. This one I do like. I actually like this. Weird. So the the fighters or the planes, um, the flyers, flyers have been broken up into three categories: attack, bomber. It's like we rehearsed this stuff or something. Bombers and fighters. That I like. So each one of them has a different role. So, attack guys. What do attackers do, James? Attack. What did they go do? Go from air to ground. Air to ground. That's fantastic. Bombers do exactly what they say. They saturate the whole entire bomber or the field with bombers. The bombs. Uh, they drop bombs. And then, of course, fighters. We don't have one. We're pretend. They attack air to air. Flying taxi. And pew, a lot of you probably pew pew. A lot of you are probably saying, "Well, that's crap," because I've only got one type of plane, and now I'm stuck in a roll. Yep. Yep, you are. Uh, but in reality, that's actually the way the real put the. It's the way the real world works. So, for example, we were just using this example. I, what is that? Is it a new class? That's a meta beast fighter. Tiger bomber. 
better, better. So it's kind of like the military when it's, they roll out their X thirty five. That's supposed to be able to do everything. It does nothing very well. Careful. Our, our, our overseas people have the same plan. Plane, 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 plane. I'm just, I'm just saying it's got no. some issues. Shh. It's more like this. An A ten attacks air to ground. Exactly. Has a large cannon on the front of it. Doesn't shoot so well air to air. Specialist vehicle. And it does have air to air armament. I get it. All you military people out there. And we'll get to that. It talks about this. But then you've got like the F sixteen, for example. Mm -hmm. Does great to attack ground, but it's designed to take out air to air. And then you have multi combat type things at 15. Ugh, doesn't matter. Sorry. Maverick requesting a flyby. Negative. <laughs> they, they really don't like the supplements, they're just playing with the toys. Anyway, so pursuit. With that all in mind, that's changed. So that's the first change. Pursuit. That's in the dogfight phase and in. 40K Which is what does it do, James? What? Pursuit. Oh, pursuit. Tell I, us. I was talking about the attack of the bombers. Pursuit adds um, their acceleration, their top speed, and represents a number higher or better. So it allows them to go farther if they flat out or zoom, if they so choose. They can go farther, which makes the game interesting because now you can reach objectives a little bit better and hover, possibly. Cool. And uh, uh, grab your objective. Or just fly off the table faster. Or just fly off the table faster. That's that flyby. This one, the one as I like, agility. All flyers have the agility My value. plane's coming in. My plane's going off. I'm taking my book. I'm going home. No, it's okay. So agility, it represents the maneuverability. It's represented by a certain number. Um, the higher, the better. This, this is new. All flyers, with the exception of Eldar, who have Vector Dancer, which is still there. All flyers are only allowed to make one up to 90 degree turn. And then they go where they're supposed to go. And it's, if I remember right, it's at the beginning of the turn, and then they go. They can't go and then turn. They have to turn and then go. Correct? I get that right? Go, turn, go. Go, turn, go. Whatever. Go! I'm right. sure I'm wrong. Anyway, agility, if you roll, whatever your agility value, so let's say it's five, uh, which all Eldar have five, mm -hmm. doing dark Eldar. If I roll a five, a four, a three, a two, a one, I get to make a second 90 degree turn. So as far as I'm reading this right, with Vector Dancer, they get to make their first 90 degree turn. Vector Dancer, they can make their second. And then Agility, they can make a third. So you could make three rights, which is the same as making one left. Or four wrongs. Okay. Obviously, the Orcs and people like that, they have crappy Agility, so they don't make a turn. Well, they can. <laughs> really if they lucky. get lucky. If they roll two ones. So that can, that can make some things a little bit... So you get to roll that before you decide where you're going. It's not like you go and then say, I'm going to make the turn, and then roll and find out you don't make the turn. That's it. That's exactly how you do it. Oh. So it's kind of risky then. Yeah. It's it's uh, a zooming right here. Break turns. A zooming flyer can attempt to make a second up to 90 degree turn at any point during its move. Any point during its move. Including just after making its initial 90 degree turn. This is called a break turn. To do so, move the flyer to the position where it will attempt to break the turn and roll the dice. If the roll is equal to or less than the flyer's agility value, then it succeeds and may make the break turn and carry on with its move. On any other roll, the turn fails and it cannot carry on in the... It, it can only carry on in a straight line. Carry on my wayward plane. Go ahead. We have to pay royalties for that. Sorry. Because like, that wasn't the right words. 10% <laughs> of it. Or the right notes. <laughs> um, air targets and ground targets. This becomes super picky now. Some rules for that is flyers, skimmers, jet bikes, flying monsters, creatures, flying gargantuan creatures are air targets. Anything else is a ground target. That helps out with bringing fighters. So you gotta shoot down that pesky demon prince. You bring a you bring a fighter. Do you have a pesky demon prince? I have two. Yes, two. Inconceivable. The other new rule is called air superiority. If any one of the players and the flyers in the reserve at the end of the dogfight phase, which we'll get into, um, a player is said to have air superiority. A player with air superiority can choose to add one or subtract one from their reserve rolls, and their opponent must subtract one from all their reserve rolls. So there is some benefits to bringing on some flyers because you can automatically dominate the airspace and cause some, cause some havoc there. Which um, if, you got a, if you got a bunch of Terminators trying to go in, then you could say no. Yes. Which doesn't make any sense because Terminators are teleporting, but that's okay. But you could waste a lot of points trying to stop somebody else from getting a good reserve roll. Yeah, I don't see the advantage of bringing a bunch of flyers just yeah, to do that. just do that. Anyway, yeah. you could stop a bunch of Terminators from teleporting in, which still doesn't make any sense because <laughs> they're teleporting, but... Okay, moving on. Right. Go ahead. So now we get into... We'll look back up. We got all the stats in here. Look them up. We're not going to go through it all. Some of them are not... Some, actually, there's a new fighter. 
It's the, uh, what is it? The, these guys. It's the Mosquito with a uh, hardened windshield. Stormhawk Interceptors. Yeah. It's got a couple more guns on it, and it's a little bit of a shield-looking thing. Bigger wings. Look it up. It's it's greater. It's got 12, 11, 11. It looks kind of cool. I That's like it. It's a good-looking like model. It yeah. It looks... So if you want a new fighter, and then it's got some specific formations, which we'll get to in a minute. But, so the dogfight phase. Oi. Can we can we bring out some, uh, some models? Yes. So before we begin, everything we just told you, according to the rule book, mandatory. That has to take place. That's what they say. Is what they say. The rest is optional. Okay? The rest is optional. However, it does give specifics. So if, let's say, pretend that Chad wants to do the dogfight phase, and Rico does no. not, then you have to roll off and whoever gets it wins. There are some advantages. <laughs> Dear God. I, I got, got a four. I got a four. I got a four. I got a four. There's some distinct advantages. Oh, wait. We're supposed to be doing it. You got a four. Oh, oh. I have to do the dogfight phase. Where's your dogfighter, Rico? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've lost complete control of my channel. Okay. Anyway, the channel, the channel, it's there. That's why I said. Anyway, um, there's some good news and some bad news about this this particular thing. Before we should demonstrate it, we will demonstrate it. All of us, uh, at least Rico and I, and I believe Chad's, and he hasn't actually said it, but I agree. This, this, at this point, I really wouldn't recommend doing the dogfight phase for 40k. It's kind of, it's a mini game. It's great as a side game if you want to do flyers on flyers. But That'd be great yeah, if you just have a bunch of flyers. It actually has some okay rules. Uh, I don't know if tournaments are going to use this. This is one of those things where I guess you could use flyers at advantage. But it's really just a fancy rock, paper, scissors. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. There are some distinct tactical advantages to it if you do it and you play it right. But again, Rico brings up a great point off camera, which is you spend an hour in a book anyway, unless you're super good at this game. Now you've got to memorize another table, another chart, and you're going to have another book to do all this stuff. And so with that, I usually I disagree with him, but I absolutely agree with him. I absolutely agree with him. This, if somebody's going to want to do a dogfight phase, I really don't think I'm going to going to do it. There's just You're going to be back there. Uh, not going to do it. Especially those of you who bring bombers, you're never going to want to do this no, phase. No, you don't want to do the dogfight phase because your bomber gets shot down before they even come to the board. So, as we mentioned, you spend $50 for your plane and it never gets to the board. Ever, because they shoot it down before it even gets there. But the dogfight phase, nonetheless. So we can just say, I have a bomber. Do you want to shoot it down? Okay, you shut down. <laughs> you can choose to disengage if I'm you never roll going, lucky I'm enough. never going to even bring it because it just gets shot down. So, let's go with the dogfight phase. Okay, so now we're back into the dogfight phase. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Wow, wow, wow. Yo, yo, yo. So we've entered into the dogfight phase. And we're how far apart? 36 inches. So we're just going to read this. So there's, there's 36. four. 36. Four phases. Inception phase, or interception phase, well, engage, I'm off, I'm off. maneuver, attack. Shush, you two. Shush. So the players of each... Um, they entered the dogfight phase, so they both agreed. Here's the dice, I'm sorry. No, I lost. Remember, I disagreed and I lost. So you now you've entered. Four. Yes, you've entered into the dogfight phase. Here we go. So we're going to explain this to you, and then we're going to show you the formations, and then we're going to wrap this video up. All right, here we go. Play. <laughs> Hopefully, because there's some hate and discontent. So, first of all, we need to determine you have an attack plane. Attack plane! You have a fighter, correct? Do you not know? What is it? I don't know. What is it, James? I don't know. It's what a troop it, transport. James? I don't play. It's a Necron. flying, flipping Necron troop You're transport. You're the one with the book. Well, tell me what it is. Is that a nice size? Nice size. Nice. So it's what is it? An attack flyer. flyer. It's, it's an, an attack, attack flyer. flyer. What's mine? An attack flyer. Mine's an attack flyer. We both have attack flyers. All right. So. So the players we're roll. We're very effective at shooting the ground, <laughs> and not each other. Both players. Each roll a dice, adding one if they have more fighters than bombers in reserve, and subtracting one if they have more bombers than fighters. I got a two. He got a three. He got a three. Three roll ties. The winner of the roll-off is the attacker. Attacker! attacker. 
and the other is the defender during the phase. I'm a defender in the phase. So the attacker at this point is supposed to choose one of his flyers and one of the enemy flyers to go against. They both just have these. I choose this flyer against that flyer. Okay, take the two flyers, place them on a separate table or another place you have surface. So now you even need another table. Great, now we have to come up with a board that's a terrain board and a, paint up blue. And a flyer yeah, board. Just straight sky blue. Put clouds on a couple it. Couple puffs of cotton. Each facing each other, 36 inches apart. Now we've been, that's that's the interception subphase. Okay. Now we've been entered the engagement phase. Engage. We're gonna get engaged, Jack. I'm so happy. Each player places a dice behind their hand so that it is hidden from their opponent, and then rotates it so that the number is, e <laughs> is either one, you choose, Chad? two, or three. Now obviously we would know what each one represented though, right? Yes, so there's a chart in the book, and hopefully you're supposed to know. There We've looked at it, this is the rock, paper, scissors part of it, but to be honest with you, there is some tactical advantages to what you have. So you could actually just do this. <laughs> Right? Or we could use dice because this is a dice game. Yes. I'm hiding my dice from you. I'm hiding my dice from you. Okay, so the, so we're going to reveal. I'm revealing. Yours is a four. One, one, one to three. Two, three. Dad. It was one a, it to was, three. It, it stuck to my sweaty palm. <laughs> yeah, sweaty palm. The winner can choose to close or increase the range of the opponent by 12. Who so won? You won. Why well, he got a one? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we go to the chart. See my bad. So the attacker is a one. He's going to track. You're a two. You're going to loop. Each player rolls a dice and adds their flyer's pursuit value to the roll. The player with the higher score is the winner. In the case of the tie, rolls. So I don't think I did. I got a one. He won. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't even look at the pursuit value. Unless mine's eight and yours is two. Negative two or one. Okay. So what happens? Now, the winner can choose to increase or decrease the range by 12. I would like to increase the range, no, decrease the range between us. So does he move or I move? You stay put. I stay put. Kaput! So that was 12 inches right there, exactly measured. Yes. Kaput. If the winner's pursuit value is at least two points higher than the loser's, they can instead choose to close the range or increase the range up to 24. Wow, you could. That's a fighter. Zoom away. Oh, it's a fighter. We're not fighters. Alternately, We're the winner attacked. can choose to disengage at the end of the dog fight immediately. So at this point, if he wanted to, Chad wanted to, he can leave. If Chad or uh, Rico happened to win, since obviously he doesn't want a dog fight, he can leave. This is why bombers never want to be in this phase. They just don't want to be any, period. Unless anything. they win. Then they can run away you just don't want to get into a dog fight with a bomber. No. That's, that's the way it is. And don't get in a land battle with. So now we're in the maneuver. We're gonna do the exact same thing. They're gonna pick up their pieces of dice. Pieces of dice. Pieces of dice. One through three. And whoever one has- One to three, Chad. One to three. One to three, Chad. Okay, so we reveal. A three, three and a one. The attacker is a one. And the attacker does a wing over, and the defender does a stall. The defender is the winner. I win! So that he went in the maneuvering Did he phase. shoot at me at all? No, we're getting there. The players secretly pick a number, wow. which we did, reveal the dice simultaneously, which we did, and then look at the maneuver table. The winner can force their opponent, so you can force your opponent to pivot their flyer by 90 degrees to the left or to the right, to the left, to or by up to 180 degrees if the winner's agility value is at least two points higher than the loser's. Alternately, the winner can choose to jink if a flyer jinx in the dogfight phase, the effects described in page 58. So this is where the tactics come in. So now you're going to force this flyer to do I'm going to have to have you turn that way 90 degrees. Let's take a look at your guys' agility Yay. according to the new stats. Your agility is a 2. I'm sure mine's probably a 7. <laughs> Quadrillion. We're flying giant toasters. They're very agile. But you're the tiny toaster. Yours is three. C, at least close to seven. So not two points. So now now we have each other dead to rights. So now... Now I can shoot him? Now we have the attack subphase. So this is where we get into the angle of attack. If there's a head-on pass, which let's just remember this. This is an example of a head-on pass. Both players must fight, fire snapshots. Oh my god, we're going head to head with him. I can't believe we're going to do that. Can we fly like upside down and flip him off as we go back? Yes. Likewise, you can make someone tail, which is the optimum, because this plane only fires snapshots. This plane fires full ballistic skill. We're still trying to figure out how this one fires at that one, if that one's behind it. We have it's got a gun right there, right? 
No, that's, that's, a, that's a funky tail thing. That's his spine. Okay. But we've done this. Through the so. evolution, Necrons used to have tails. That's the leftover piece. <laughs> So like I said, head-on flyers, if they're flying together, snapshots. Tailing, this one gets the fire full ballistic scale, the other one fires snapshots. All of their angles and in their circumstances, attack flyers and bombers only fire snapshots because they don't have sky fire. Okay, so I'm fighters, shooting them at snapshot. Fighters shoot full ballistic skill because they're fighters. They're, they're fighters. Yeah. It's important to realize also that fighters can choose to fire a ground target Can fire ground targets. I can edit that. And uh, <laughs> firemen, man. All right. You're it's important to know that fighters off. can fire. They fire full ballistic skill in the air. So air to air, skimmers, all that kind of stuff. Full BS. Full BS. If they want to shoot at the ground, they have to declare that they're shooting at the ground. And for that entire phase, they shoot bullet uh, snapshots. So it's the re it's the anti sky fire rule. Makes ground sense. fire. So if I pick, if I pick, I'm shooting at the ground at snapshots, or I can if shoot at have the a ground. Fire. I can shoot at the ground normal if I pick I'm shooting at the ground, but I have to shoot at the ground. Yes. Which one? Everything. So it's always snapshots, no matter what, if I'm shooting the ground. Yes. If you're a fighter, if you are a fighter only and you want to shoot the ground, it's all snapshots. Likewise, this is an attack flyer, full full ballistic skill shooting the ground, but since you're in air to air, you're snapshotting at each other, and then you just you you figure it out normally. His armor value versus last cannons and all that kind of stuff. And, and now, just remember, this is all before you even start the normal game. Each You do this each time at the beginning of each game turn, game turn, if you still have flyers in reserve. Once they're on the table, it's, it's the same. And then we go into this attack roll. So, so there's like four tables we've looked three. at already. Three tables we've So do it again one more time. Grab your dice. One, two, three. Reveal. Two. Two, so it's a tie and a tie. So you're going to tail and you're going to hold steady. The attacker shoots first. In addition, add one to the attacker's ballistic skill for the duration of the subphase. But he can't shoot at me because he's sideways. Then I would say then you get to do your thing and you shoot. So I shoot a bunch of snapshots. So. And you and you shoot a bunch of snapshots, blah blah blah. Then you take the damage. The only, Missed every shot. The only thing that now comes into play is any damage that happens to this fighter when it comes on the board, it stays. So yeah. it's technically you can blow up. And then there's one more chart. Yeah. Basically, if you do a crash and burn, one, you crash in your territory, two, it destroys midair, nothing happens, and six, or I'm sorry, one is crashing your 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 territory. Two through pew, five. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, shut you down. It blows Roll. up in midair. Six, Roll. hey. Roll. Six Roll. crashes over there. You guys are so silly. Roll. I want to see what you do. Five. So he'd be destroyed in midair. If you actually blew him up. That's it. And then you put them on the ground. So the moral of this particular story is this. One, unless you bring fighters, don't get in the dogfight phase. Okay. It's really kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. Two, if you're bringing bombers, you must, you, you would want to avoid the dogfight phase at all costs. They suffer the most penalties. Three, you know what? This is really pointless. <laughs> it's kind of a fun little sub game you can play. So it's kind of a pre game that occurs before the game occurs on it's the It's an appetizer. Yeah. But it can happen each time you leave something it's in reserve. It's a 40k appetizer. So if you if you bring them out of reserve, <laughs> I never thought about it that way. You're on. It's not very tasty. It's more like yeah. that paste kind of thing on crackers. But as as a game, it may not be bad if you're playing just flyers. But yeah. just, you'd want fighters though because it'd be useless if you're doing just flyers to bring bombers, bombers on, because yeah. that'd just be dumb. Yes. So that's the dogfight. Unless you're doing like a scenario campaign where you had to escort a bomber or something, then maybe. It almost feels like they need to put these tables all on a cheat sheet somewhere, so instead of flipping through your book 16 times while doing the separate subface, you can just consult the table on the page. Everything being put aside, if you understand the way the table works and you actually look at it, you can you can choose. You can actually start actually tactically choosing. Okay. Um, so there is that. With all that said and done, again, I agree, this should be, nah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe right. I'll watch a couple more videos somewhere or see somebody. Right now, I'm the only one that has the supplement in our area, and I'm not choosing to use it. Um, but again, you have to use the, the uh, stats. The new stats. You have to use Which the stats. Fun. It could be kind of fun to play Renegade for Airplanes, though. Renegade for Airplanes. Now, we're going to quickly show you the, uh, the formations and what they are and a little bit of on how that works, and then uh, we'll wrap up this video. So the first formation is this. Wait, no, 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 one too many planes. I'm just bringing planes out. First formation is that. 
and it's the Vigilance Attack Pattern. It says it has to be two to six inches off the wing, um, and basically what it does is it gives you the attack flyer. If it's an attack flyer on the head, like this one is, it's plus one to the ballistic skill. If it's a bomber, it's plus one to strength. If it's a fighter, it's plus one ballistic skill to air to air. This is your this is your minimal formations. Now we were just talking anywhere within this range, two to six inches. That's the pattern. Um, does it have to be exactly like the picture? I, that's up to your local gaming store, to be honest with you. But what happens if you start getting into terrain? What about skyscrapers? We kind of talked about it. You know, as long as it's still at two to six inches. I think you're going to be okay. You could be six inches here, but once you're sitting on the top of a piece of tall terrain, suddenly you're seven inches. Are you out of formation? I, I would know. I would say yes. Um, but also keep in mind that vehicles are measured hall to hall, not base to base. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's hall to hall, so wingtip to wingtip. Anywhere back in here, in my opinion, anywhere back in here, as long as you're not directly behind, anywhere back in here, you're in formation. And it says that's it. So you can be over on this side. Or you can be on oh, midair collision. <laughs> Stinking Inquisition flyers <laughs> over here. Um, he is not one of the blue angels. <laughs> before we even go further, I my personal opinion: formations are going to work great for the first turn. They're going to come on. You're going to have them in formation. You're going to do your thing, and then and then the dog fight's going to be on. And, no poo. and everything's going to go every which way. But we'll see. The next one is we add a second flyer, basically in a triangle formation or a diamond. And that this would be three the, flyers in a triangle formation. Yes. Um, again, two to six inches. Two to six inches, two to six inches, two to six inches. Um, so you could technically be like this. Oh, is this six? Six? Is this six. No. Nope. Does it have to be six? It doesn't have to be nope. six. Two to six, two to six, two to six. So this can be like... Oh, no, six to twelve. Oh, you're right, six, six to twelve. 12. Oh, sorry. So this could be here. Two to six. They don't, two to six. My point is they don't have to be even. Oh, I see what you're saying. This could be tucked up close. That could yep. be a wide. Yeah, they don't have to be even, but it has to be back here. Okay. But then it's a weird off-center formation. All right, this one gives uh, the attack flyers the tank hunter special rule. Bombers re-roll failed armor penetration with bombs and can choose to re-roll glancing. And fighters get the tank hunter rules against air-to-air. -air. Cool. That's not too bad. The next one is the intolerance attack pattern. I'm intolerant of this one. <laughs> <laughs> two to six. Two to six. Uh, attack flyers, weapons used by attacking flyers have the ignore cover rule. As long as you're shooting at the ground. Bombers have the ignore cover rule and fighters have the ignore cover rule in air to air. I can see that as an advantage. Okay. Okay. The next one is the unmerciful attack pattern. Oh, that is unmerciful. This one has a lot. Attack flyers double their pursuit value when they move flat out, which means they can go farther. In addition, they can make a shooting attack with up to four weapons when they move flat out. If they do so, all flyers must target the same enemy unit, which must be a ground target. The second flyer to the attacker in the enemy adds plus one to its ballistic skill, and the third flyer adds two to its ballistic skill. So this is the bombing or strafing event where all the airplanes exactly. come in and just hit the same thing on the That's way through. That's exactly what The is. Congo line of doom. Uh, ooh, you just might do Bombers, um, again, they double their pursuit value, all that kind of stuff. Um, as long as they didn't drop bombs in the first movement phase, they can they can move farther. So this is a way to get across the board. If they do uh, in movement phase, if they do so, all flyers must target the same model. Reduce the distance to the second bomber scatters by one inch. Reduce the distance to the third by two to a minimum of zero. So it reduces your scatter for the bombs. Fighters, say, that's where he hit. Move over here. That's where he hit. Move yep. Over. Yeah. Exactly. You're learning from other people's mistakes. Fighters yes. again. We double our pursuit range. Um, they can fire up to four weapons when they move flat out. If they do so, all flyers must target the same air target. The second flyer um, adds one to the ballistic skill and two to the ballistic skill. The second flyer. Or the third flyer. I'm sorry. The third flyer adds two. The next one is the indomitable attack pattern. <laughs> so, two to six inches. Two to six inches. Six to twelve. Two to six. And this one pretty much gives you everything. It gives you the front vehicle has attack pattern receives a special rule for the vigilance, which is the first pattern. In addition, the, the, the flyer wings receive the special rules they normally would see for the romance attack pattern and the intolerance pattern. This pretty much gives you everything all in one. It's all the good stuff, huh? Yep. Then there's the omniscience attack pattern. 
Uh, at the start of the shooting phase, pick one enemy unit that was in the line of sight of all the flyers. It has to be in line of sight of all of them. Again, Terrain's gonna mess this up. For the rest of the battle, the flyers and the wing have the preferred enemy special rule. Um, and if you choose a DAC, for example, it says if you use a DACA jet, the flyers and this attack pattern would gain preferred enemy against that DACA jet and all other DACA jets on the board. That's DACA-tastic. So, that's DACA jet. <laughs> Then there's the Fortitude, which is the box. And this uh, gives all the flyers 4 plus and vulnerable save, besides the Jink. In addition to. And it will give it the It Will Not Die special rule. We're back to 2 to 6, 2 and to 6, 2 to 6, 2 to 6. And all weapons have the Interceptor. Interceptor. Interceptors? Interceptor. Interceptor. Interceptors. And that's all the formations. Wasn't there like five in one of them? No, I thought there was. There should be. I was totally wrong. It's the Chad formation. So that's uh, that's our <laughs> squishy head. What squishy head? Squishy head. Squishy head. Squishy head. Are we squishing all our viewers? Stop. That's our review of uh, Dustin's guys. There's a lot of other stuff in here, guys. There's there's a uh, um, attack patterns for each of the different factions, which give a little bit more statistics. Uh, there's uh, wing leader stats. So you choose a wing leader. Wing leaders. Wing leaders. Wing leaders. Wing leaders. Wing leaders. Is there any faction that kind of got left out in this book? Uh, yeah. Who got who got overlooked? Adeptus Satoritas. The Satoritas. The Satoritas. The Citrus ladies. The Sisters of Battle. Sisters of Battle. Do they even have a flyer? This was a forge rolled one that actually showed up in their old codex. That that's why I have it because it was the only flyer that they even could have. Sisters of Battle. It's actually an Imperial Guard one, but. For some reason they like to borrow this one. Well, it's just like Inquisition. They don't have a flyer. They borrow an Imperial flyer. So they walk up and go, "Hello, boys." I say, "Hey, guys. Can we borrow your flyer?" And they kind of pick their habits up a little bit, show some leg, and say, "What well, is that?" The guys go, "Hey." Okay. That's exactly how that, that happens. Works. This is a family program. Most of these people don't even know what a habit is, <laughs> except the one that they're doing right now, which is this hobby. <laughs> anyway, um, pick it up. So. So you, can even notice, you can even notice the small sister of battle pinup painting on the front of the plane there. No. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to have it for the new flyer stuff, but mediocre at best. I, I'm not that impressed. I'm not. Um, I know it's relatively new. It's okay. People are going to use it. I, I, how it's going to affect the tournament scene, a competition, I can see that. Friendly yeah. game? Jeez, you just added more you added stuff. Like seven steps before you even started playing the first round of 40k. And then every round after that, if your flyers choose not to come on, yes, or they, or if you miss the roll or whatever, yeah. So it's kind of unnecessarily complex. Yes, taking from the fact of, of Age of Sigmar, whether you like Age of Sigmar or not, they so they've really made that game easier. So if if you say you had air superiority, is that only was that only if you had no planes, or you dominated the skies like you yeah. you had I mean, more so than the other players? Let's, okay, if so you have more fighters. Has, than so here's the yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna say, so he has a bunch of fighters, and I have bombers. Mm -hmm. He can keep making my roll miss. Correct. And my bombers never would make it on. He could sit and shoot them down before they ever made it to the table. Not only can he make them not come on, but he has the chance to shoot yeah, them down. As a, yes. He can shoot as, them down before they even come on. Is this in any way increase the effectiveness of bombers in the game? Because uh, is it worth having the fighter escort to get the bomber on the board? Possibly. I mean, because now the bombers are some formation that make the things scatter less. It makes them, you know, hit harder up to strength. Do they increase their strength? That's if they even make it on the board. But if, if they make it on the board. But you see, let's say that I don't bring any flyers, and you think I'm going to bring flyers, and you bring a bunch of fighters, now they're useless. But as, as you mentioned, our old friend is going to come back and be more effective. Quad guns! Quad guns. I'm all excited about the quad guns. I really am. I like quad guns. Uh, and then they nerfed them really bad. And Well, now they're effective again. But now they might be Because, okay, but here's the problem. You bring on a fighter. Let's uh, say you bring on two fighters. That can't really do anything. And I don't bring anything on, you're snap shooting the ground every time. On the flip side, I don't though, have to make you jink. I don't even have to shoot at you to make you jink to snap shoot. I can leave you alone all day long and you have to you have to do it. But on the flip side, you don't even dare bring a bomber without a fighter escort at this point then because there's a good possibility if you bring it on, it gets lost in the first round and But the problem is with that is is if he let's say you have the fighter and the bomber and uh -huh. he wins, he gets to pick your plane. He doesn't. He's not going to pick the fighter. He's going to pick the bomber. That makes sense. So there's no. Yeah, I take it back. There is because if you have a fighter, it adds to your rolls. Okay. With the whole thing. So that does that. Remember, it adds to your to your. So you think you need to commit a lot of airplanes to it or none at all? Yeah. This is one of those you bring a lot of airplanes or none at all. Or I you just don't play that. 
And you play just defensive dogfights on your own. Which, is, this kind of hurt my Dark Eldar fighters. Because I used to be able to drop all those template missiles on you. Right. And then take off. Now I Skyfire, I can't. Or ground fire, the anti Skyfire. I can't shoot template weapons on a snapshot. Hmm. So. So why do you even have that gun? Why do I even have mono sight? I'd have to do some more research. I mean, maybe it's an air to air. Maybe there's something special about it. Because I can't shoot templates at another air to air either. Yeah, nerf that. So. Maybe it's not a fighter, maybe it's an attacker. Maybe I open my mouth before I exit the research. Mouth opening before research. We never do that. That's why we have editors. No, nope, it's a fighter. It is. So there's got to be four mono size missiles. Maybe in his workshop just in, uh, uh, just texted me. <laughs> did they? They did. And let's find out. Their new text was. Oh, okay. So plastic they... scenic bases for your Warhammer 40k armies. Releasing new bases. With bumpies and other little thingies on them to make them look like they are. You know, it's all about the they, base. Uh, they fixed about it. The base, about the they base. fixed it. Oh. So the monocyte missiles are assault one large blast, which means I cannot shoot them at you air to air. So I bring I bring a void or a razor wing jet fighter on with two dark lances. That's my air to air. That's it. My missiles are going air to ground. Then I'm done. Whereas a void raven bomber. How do you shoot it as a snapshot? It it allows it. It says it. Oh, okay. The missiles are allowed, unless I choose the, the air. Missiles are allowed. Unless I choose the air-to-air -air missiles. Then they're not allowed. So I think the stock, like you were saying, of quad guns, and what's that? Uh, the hunter-killer thing that the oh, the Marines have. The Marine. The tank. Yeah. The anti-air thing. Oh, the anti-air. Yeah. I think the stock in that just went up, maybe. Yeah. And hydras for air drill guard. Fluff-wise, I like it. I like the attack. I like the fighter. I like the bomber. I like the fact that they separate it. I like the fact that you can do that kind of stuff, and you're going to have to choose what you want. Are, is your army, do you want to hit the ground a lot? Then you better choose attack fighters or bombers. You well, better go buy I, those models. And I understand the formations, how long are they going to last? I mean, One turn, two, I maybe? Say, yeah, even if you had whatever, this formation, and they're flying in, and all of a sudden, now you're Yeah, fighting, and, and now you're Oh, let's go into this formation, then, or whatever, and then, oh, now, you know. Okay. So that's what makes it nice, because if you're going to come on in a formation, and I know what the formation is, and I'm assuming you're going to stick with it, I'm going to maneuver accordingly to take out Shoot your... down middle guy or whatever. Yeah, or my fighters are going to come in. The only thing I really do like, I really like the, the gamble of having that extra turn, because that can make things a little bit more interesting. And again, tell me if I'm wrong with Vector Dancer. Is that three? So you get three? to move, sh they turn, can... move, shoot, move, turn, move. Turn. Right. Turn if they if they make the agility roll. What's well, a five? So anything but a six. Pretty makeable for them. I don't know. Could be. Like, yeah. comment. If you guys are playing the, the supplement, let us know how it works out for you. We just kind of read it through. We haven't really played it with uh, that other. We played a few demo versions of just the dogfight phase, and actually that was kind of enjoyable just by itself. But we just don't want to add that on to another already lengthy game. Um, I don't know. Comment below, like, subscribe, comment, and tell us what you guys think. Tell us we're wrong. Tell us we're right. Tell us we don't even know what the heck we're talking about. We don't listen anymore. I don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. We do listen. And uh, No, I don't know what I'm talking about. That you? It's funny that you're wearing a Star Wars X-Wing shirt. Did you plan that that way? No. What shirt are you wearing? You guys don't know? What is it? I don't know. I'm wearing a 40k amateur hour shirt because that's, you know... Oh, wow, you're like official. Do you not know? You should know. That's a D&D &D shirt. No. No. Well, tell us, because we're running out of footage. No, I got 64 megabytes on that thing. Yeah, but our... Well, well there's a fighter guy and a big orky looking thing. Yeah, what is it? World of Warcraft. Oh, for the movie? Yes. Oh. Well, I thought it was going to be guessing... Came in Loot Crate. Loot Crate. Loot <laughs> Okay, I get it now. You get it now? Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, it's an orc with a guy. I don't know. Warcraft, D&D, &D, I don't know. Anyway, check out our next videos. Look for Renegade and look for a special event coming up soon. Yep, and well, two. Two, two special two, events. Two, two, Three. Two, There's Gladiator Games. Ooh. Yeah. Gladiator Games. Anybody will. Battle Haven. Uh -huh. And then a special announcement that I'm special, doing. Special, special. That you special, may tag on to. Special, yes. Coming up soon. He doesn't want to go. Actually, he does want to go. He just can't. Mm. I'm going to try to pack him up into my luggage. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.